Guys, it's official. We're going to South Africa. Looks like we're stuck. Our journey starts in Seattle. From here, we will be going on a long trip to South Africa, flying through Qatar on a 14 hours flight, then waiting eight hours in Qatar for our final flight to Cape Town in South Africa. Since it will be a very long trip, we may as well enjoy every second of it. Very long trip, but very good food, by the way. The best one we have ever had on a plane. What does it taste like? Really nice. Tastes like real food. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it was a very long flight, but the food made up for it. Welcome to the airport of Doha here in Qatar. We survived a 14 hour flight. Now we will wait here for eight hours and then take a flight that is what, Stop Steven? 10 hours to South Africa. About 10 hours long to South Africa. Trying to find something to do here for eight hours. We have already been in the Hamad International Airport for a few hours and we have not found anything to eat. Things here are pretty expensive. Um, things here are really good. Which is the cheapest one here? About probably $10. $10 for... That's US dollars. That little beauty over there. Yeah. Double Whopper is about 40 Qatars. That's a lot of money for burger. So here we have some Lebanese chicken with vegetables. That is 59 Qataris. Creamy chicken pasta with mushrooms. That is 51. We got some rice and some chicken, chicken curry, curry, curry with vegetables. And it cost about, about $12, $13 probably. And a water, which costs us about $3 to $4. Yeah. One of the reasons why maybe this place is so expensive is look at the internet. Tons of Macs wow. where people can use the internet. And can we just use them for free? I don't know, I don't know. I think maybe. So these places are like television areas where people can sit yeah. and watch TV. Do you want to come look? We'll explore. Those eight hours were really long, but we had some entertainment by checking prices. I don't know, 890. Wow. The reduced price of over a thousand. That's about three hundred dollars. Two of these Evian bottles, water bottles, they go for forty Qatars. Two of them together, they are what seven hundred fifty milliliters. At the end of the eight hours, we were super tired and we were so happy to finally board the plane to South Africa. After the 14 hours flight, we were just so happy that this last one was only 10. The trip had now ended. <laughs> and we could finally catch up with family that we haven't seen in a long, long time.
After a few days of rest, Steven and I were ready to explore Cape Town. So we went to our first historical landmark, the Waterfront Shopping Mall. So here we are at the Waterfront. It's kind of a shopping area by the water in Cape Town. Seems like we need to walk through the mall to get to the Waterfront. Let's go for it. You guys might be wondering what we're doing in South Africa. Well, Steven is from South Africa and we came to sort some stuff. Steven and I have been married for quite a long time now and I didn't know South Africa up to this date. So it's very exciting for me and it's a bit nerve-wracking to be driving <laughs> in a car which the wheel is on the right hand side and I feel like we are on the wrong side of the road all the time but I, get, I, I think it takes some time to get used to it. As part of the harbor, the V&A Waterfront Shopping Mall rests at the foot of the Table Mountain and has over 450 retail outlets. And it's a very important part of the very beginning of the settlement of the city of Cape Town. I just spotted an Havaiana store and that touches my heart because Havaianas are from Brazil and I'm from Brazil. <laughs> My wife is from Brazil, where Havaianas are from. You're right for me though. This is so cute. Is it Havaianas with an African touch? So sweet. That's $30. We are finally at the waterfront. This is so cute. And there's Table Mountain in the background. It all started in 1654, when the commander Jan van Riebeek was charged with improving the natural anchorage at the Table Bay. Back then, fresh water and fresh supplies were provided to the ships of the Dutch India Company for the long journeys to their stations in Java and Batavia. The discovery of gold and diamonds in South Africa generated an increased number of ships. So the two harbors, Alfred Basin and Victoria Basin, were built to accommodate them all during 1860 and 1920. To this date, this area of the harbor is still surrounded with numerous heritage buildings from back then. Commissioned by Queen Victoria and established by her son, Prince Albert, in 1902, this listed heritage building is one of the oldest harbor buildings in Cape Town, serving as the official post office. It reopened in 2016 as Life is Grand Café. Behind me over there, you can see the beautiful Table Mountain with the clouds over it. They say that those clouds on the top, they are like a tablecloth. And sometimes you can see them kind of overpouring on the sides as the tablecloth would over the table. And it's so beautiful. In the early 20th century, South Africa depended mainly on imports for many daily use items. So having a harbor was really important for the people living here. Nowadays, a harbor receives thousands of tourists every year from all over the world and it's filled with restaurants and their traditional South African dishes. And of course, Stephen and I could never pass on food. Nando started in South Africa and it's a Portuguese South African peri peri chicken. Yeah, I love it. This stuff is spicier than the one in Canada, I think, huh? I guess that's what they call it, spicy rice for. <laughs> Ordered some beef bread from Steers. Oh wow, it's in a fancy box there. Whoa, go. Oh. Ooh, nice. What I like about these chips is they, they like fries, but they're not fries, they chips. And they're kind of sloppy instead of crispy. So I like them. How long have you worked here? I have now 21 years. 21 years at the waterfront? Yeah. Very cool. 2000. 2000. Very cool. Awesome. Good, Good to, to meet you. you. I used to eat bougainvilleas when I was a kid. It's not something you were supposed to eat, but I did. I was a weird kid. What can I say? Not only big brand names, the harbor also has many little stores with hundreds of African items.
that my favorite thing to do was to watch native African people expressing their culture through their music. Built in 1882, the Victorian Gothic-style clock tower is an icon of the old Cape Town Harbour and it was the original port captain's office. The red walls are the same color as they were in the 1800s, having been carefully matched to scrapings of the original paint. The clock was imported from Edinburgh and is surrounded by pointed Gothic windows. This historical landmark was declared a national monument in 1978. We still have a lot of our trip to share with you, so we invite you to subscribe to our channel for next week's video. We appreciate your like and comments and we love to read all of them. So until next week and welcome to Africa!